Hey everybody, it's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to integrate your Google Analytics with your WordPress site. And I'm going to show you how to do this with a plugin called Google Analytics by Yoast. Now, one of the big benefits of using this plugin is that you can determine which user roles are exposed to the Google Analytics code. For example, if you're creating a post on your website, and say you keep visiting the posts, you make edits, you visit the post, you make edits, you visit the post to see how the, how the edits are affecting it. Every time you visit that page, it can potentially register as a hit in your Google Analytics account, which inflates your data because that's actually you there. That's not a visitor. So you could set the Google Analytics plugin so that the analytics code does not show for any of the signed in users, which prevents that data inflation. Now you can also do this via filters inside your Google Analytics admin, but that's just more of a pain. If you have multiple authors, you'd have to know all their IP addresses or what networks they're on. And then if they're on Wi-Fi, they might be on a range of IPs and it's just a real headache. It's easier just to have a plugin and then have it so certain user roles are not exposed to the analytics code. So the first thing we have to do is install that plugin. Here we are on a WordPress dashboard. Hover over plugins, click on add new, and then we type in Google Analytics Yoast. There's a bunch of other analytics plugins as well. I just like the, the plugins that Yoast creates because it keeps them up to date. They work hard on their plugins, but if you have a preference for a different one, feel free to use that as long as you can filter user roles, which is one of the main benefits of using a plugin like this. So this first one here, Google Analytics by Yoast, I want to install that one. Let's so click on install, click on activate plugin, and then it adds a new menu item up at the top called analytics. And it also adds this attention bar up here that tells you to set your Google Analytics. So first it says we need to authenticate your Google Analytics before we can use it. Authenticate it here. And really all you're doing is you can click on this button to I'll show you what happens. Uh, Yoast will authenticate directly, so it'll connect to your analytics account. So you can do it like this, but if you're concerned for, for privacy reasons, you can actually click on the manually enter the UA code and paste it in right here. And I'm gonna show you where you grab that from your, from your analytics account. So if you go to analytics.google.com, the analytics account is connected to your Google account. So if you don't have a Google account yet, you'll have to create one. If you do have one, you may be asked to sign into it. What you want to do is click on Access Google Analytics at the top right. And then it will either ask you to sign in, create an account, or show you all your accounts. I don't have one for the demo site, so I'm going to create a new one. We create a new analytics code by clicking on the Admin button at the top, picking a site category that you want it to be under, doesn't really matter in my case. I'm just going to create a, a new account just for demo purposes. So in the middle, under property, we want to click on the drop down and then click on create new property. And then it's a, it's a website. In my case, the website name is wp-phd. doesn't really have a name. It's a demo site. wpphd.com is the website URL. Industry. This is used for benchmarking. So if you allow benchmarking data, this is the group of sites that you will be bench benchmarked against. So you want to pick the same industry you're in, or at least a similar one. So I'm going to choose internet and telecom. You choose a time zone or not. It doesn't really affect anything. And then you click on get tracking ID. On the next page, it will show you the tracking code, including the UA. So the UA is right here. It's also found right here inside of your, your code right here. But I usually just copy this one up here. It's easier. Click on copy. Go back to our Yoast plugin and we paste that code in. Click on save changes. And now our analytics code is in here. And one important thing to note, if you use the manual UA code, you won't be able to use the dashboards, which shows data within your WordPress site. For me, that's not too important. What I really, my main goal is to filter out the logged in users from the, word, from the analytics data. If you want dashboards in your site, you have to use the authentication button up here. So what we want to do now is ignore users. We want to make sure this is set to all the users we want to ignore. 
So we have administrator and editor by default. You can ignore other user roles. If you have a plugin that adds user roles, they'll show up in here as well. And you wanna add all of those that you don't want to have within your Google Analytics data. Subscribers are probably okay because they're readers on your site usually. Authors and contributors, I would normally filter out as well because they're not there to read the site content, they're there to create the content. And then what you also usually wanna do is track outbound clicks and downloads. Those are the two things I usually set to get this thing up and rolling quickly. And then I click on save changes. And then if I have a little more time, I go through all the other options. Up here there's some tabs, the universal tab, advanced tab, custom dimensions, and debug mode. Unless you're really good with Google Analytics, I recommend you just keep the defaults. But if you, if you use and know how to use the demographics and interest reports, enable it. If you know how to use enhanced link attribution, enable it. Save changes. And then in the advanced tab, there's all kinds of things. So for the track downloads, you have something in Google Analytics called events, which is a special thing that happens on your website. And you have page views, which is whenever a page is viewed. So a download of say a PDF, that I would classify as an event. And then it actually allows you to set which file extensions are classed as events. So by default, we have doc, exe, js, pdf, ppt, tgz, zip, and xls. So all of those will be tracked as events and they show up in a special area inside your analytics account that has events and it also compares changes in events. So if all of a sudden you have a spike in downloads, that will show up as an important event, that an important happening on your site inside your analytics. So I, I find events to be very handy. And there's a bunch of other settings which are mostly for advanced users, which I'll get into in a different video. Then we also get into custom dimensions and debug mode in another video as well. But if you just wanna get this thing up and running, having the general setup is the minimum, adding which users to ignore is also the minimum, you have a little more time, you can go into the universal and advanced and play around with the, with the events and the event extensions. And then the rest is for advanced users. Chances are if you don't know what they are, you won't know what they do inside of Google Analytics and you probably won't care. If you wanna know what they are, look up our more advanced video for this analytics plugin and then I will tell you what they are and show you how it works. So in this video, you learned how to install Yoast Google Analytics for WordPress and how to get the UA code from your analytics account, put it into the plugin so that you can start tracking analytics inside of Google Analytics. I hope this video helps you. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video and share it if it helped you. Check out our social media feeds and check out wplearninglab.com where we write about WordPress every single day. Talk to you soon.